my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. What are you talking about? How in Sam Hill can a retouched picture be the answer to our problem? Freddy, it was your idea, you tell him. Okay, Vern. Vern? <laughs> oh, I don't have to call him Mr. Albright anymore. Not since I got the idea to have Margie's picture retouched. Will you please tell me what you're talking about? <laughs> it's very simple. The son of the head of the Sparks Shipbuilding Company arrives today, right? Yes, and that's our problem. The handsome son of our biggest client. Your daughter is bound to want to meet him, and as sure as she does, we're in for a lot of grief. That's where the picture comes in. Of course, my interest in this thing is a little different from yours and Vern's. I just don't like Margie meeting too many good-looking fellas. So, when young Joe Sparks arrives, I'll merely let him get a casual glimpse of Margie's picture. Good grief! <laughs> that photographer certainly did a job, didn't he? Oh, he sure did. Take a look. This is Margie. As far as any future good-looking clients are concerned, this is my little Margie. Ingenious, I call it ingenious. But don't forget it was my idea. I'll even invite him over for dinner. And then he gets a load of the picture and suddenly remembers he has another appointment. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Albright. After all my dad's told me about your daughter, I'd kind of like to meet her. Uh, unusual girl, Margie. That's what my dad said. <laughs> well, of course, I'm her father, and naturally, I love her. But maybe your father exaggerated, Joe, because of his friendship for me. You know, that sort of thing. You're not trying to talk me out of meeting her, are you? I wouldn't think of it, Joe. In fact, uh, I'd like to have you come over for dinner tonight. Well, thank you, sir. After dinner, I'll leave you and Margie alone so that you can get acquainted. Well, how about that? And we're always bragging about our southern hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> Say about 7 o'clock. Oh, seven it is. Right you are. Oh, you don't mind, sir. Uh, not at all. <laughs> A definite resemblance to you, Mr. Albright. <laughs> I say, I better check my appointment book for tonight. I know we're very good at keeping appointments. I might have something else to do tonight. Better make sure. Uh, something wrong? Well, yes, sir. I promised my father I'd invite your daughter down to do the honors at the christening of our new ship, the modern Tanya. Uh, christen a ship? Oh, she'd love that. Are you sure there isn't anything you might have overlooked in that book, son? I never break a promise to my father. Uh, I'll see you tonight, Mr. Albright. <laughs> at seven. At seven. All right, if that boy finds out the truth, we could lose the whole Sparks account. Now, there's only one thing to do. When he arrives for dinner tonight, he's got to find Margie just as she looks in that confounded picture. Mr. Honeywell, I'm always accusing Margie of messing things up. I can't tell that I did a thing like that. Say, I'm running an investment business and not a practical joke shop. Tonight, Sparks meets Margie just as she is in that picture, and I don't care how you do it. 
Now, I'd hate to lose you, all right. Do you understand? I understand. <laughs> Knowing Margie as I do, you better not let her find out about that ship christening. Well, that's for sure. If she found out about that... Hiya, Mr. Honeywell. Hiya, Vern. Well, fellas, how did it go? And don't forget, it was my idea. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm right back to calling you Mr. Albright again. Why, you... <laughs> Absolutely, positively, no, I won't do it. Honey, I could really lose my job this time, and I'm not kidding. So little Margie's always getting you into a jam, huh? Okay, rub it in, say anything you want, but, but baby, don't let me down tonight. I couldn't face anybody looking like that, not even a stranger. Well, it'll only be for tonight. He'd never come back, that's for sure. Dad, I can't. Well, he, he isn't very good looking. Not very good looking? Nah, you wouldn't be missing a thing. Do you remember that trick you used to do when you were a kid, the way you used to stick your lip up like that? I know, I know. But what about this fight wig in the picture? I'm not going to ruin my hair for a dumb gag. Now, don't get excited. It's perfectly simple. Look, I, I picked this up on the way home. It's, uh, it's a pretty good match. <laughs> No, I'm going to do it for you. <laughs> That's my little girl. Baby, I don't know how I can ever thank you. I do. You can get me that diamond pin I've been wanting. Okay. And the bracelet and the earring. As I said before, that's my little girl. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Well, let's go in the living room. Lucky, huh? Honey, you know how bad the lighting is in my office. I just decided I want a new stove. What is this, blackmail? It's hard to tell. You know how bad the lighting is here in the dining room. <laughs> Well, I guess you're all worn out and want to shove off, eh, my boy? Well, sir, I am kind of worn out. Oh, we understand. I'll get your hat. Uh, first of all, I've got to ask your daughter something. Uh, that is, I want to ask her something. <laughs> oh, forget about it. Some other time, I'll get your hat. But, Dad, have you asked me? Uh, what is it? Well, I was... Oh, you wouldn't want to go, honey. <laughs> I'll get your hat. Dad just loves to get hats. What was it you were going to ask me? Well, Marge, my father suggested. I mean, I suggested to my father that I invite you down for the doings. But if you're not available, I can get somebody else. Well, <laughs> that's that. I'll get your hat. Uh, what kind of doings? Well, day after tomorrow, they're christening uh, my father's new ship, the Modern Tanya. Oh, I see. And you are going to ask, I mean, you're asking me to break the bottle of champagne. Oh, I guess. But I never did think that that was the kind of a thing for a girl to do. You didn't tell me about your christening, Father dear. Oh, and another thing. A body could fall off that dock and drown. Them christenings is real dangerous. Oh, I've always wanted to christen a ship. Oh, you, you have? Oh, yes. I'd love to go with you. <laughs> well, as we say back home, uh, that's Jim Dandy. Dad, you'll want to read your paper. We'll be in the den. Oh, sure, honey. <laughs> It really isn't much fun, christening a ship. Oh, I've always wanted my picture taken, swinging a bottle of champagne, waving to everybody, posing for the newsreel cameras. Your father showed me a picture of you today. You take quite a picture. Oh, I forgot how I look. I didn't mean it the way it might have sounded, Margie. Oh, you don't have to apologize, Joe. This just isn't the kind of face to launch a boat. Oh, you shouldn't feel that way, Margie. You should never be ashamed of your face. You're very kind. And you're very nice, too. I like you. I like you a lot. <laughs> I'm a little farsighted. I see much better when I back away from that. You don't have to apologize. I know somebody I think you'd really like to take to the christening, but... Wait a minute. I think I just figured something out. I don't think I understand, Marjorie. I just decided. I mean, I just remembered. You're going to meet my cousin. Your cousin? Uh-huh. My cousin, Carol.
Carolyn, cousin Carolyn from Philadelphia. She's coming to spend a week with us. Uh, she ought to be here any second. I, I, is she anything like you? She's just like me. Oh, wait till you meet her. Excuse me, I have to get something from my bedroom. Be right back. Well, Pappy, I just solved our problem. Oh, Margie, I beg you, no more of your crazy ideas. There's nothing to worry about. I'm going to... I'm going to that christening, and he's never going to know that you played a trick on him. Just go in and keep him entertained, and be ready for the arrival of your niece. Niece? Dad, yeah, don't you remember Cousin Carolyn from Philadelphia? I didn't think you would, but you'll remember when you see her. Oh, Margie, whatever you're thinking of doing, don't do it. All right, I'll just go in and tell him everything. Oh, no, no, you, you can't tell him. Okay, then keep him entertained. <laughs> Must be your niece. Marcia said you all were expecting her. Hi, Uncle Vern. Oh, hello, niece Carolyn from Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, Joe, come out and meet my uh, my niece. Yes, sir. Uh, niece Carolyn, this is uh, Joe Fox. Hi, Miss Carolyn. Hi, Joe. Oh, let me help you with your bag. Oh, I might have known from that accent. A southern gentleman. Oh, pleasure helping you, Miss Carolyn. A real pleasure. You're Marge's cousin. The same blood runs in our veins. Yeah, same corpuscles and everything. <laughs> Where's Margie? Oh, she went to her room. Uh, where would you like me to put this, Miss Carolyn? I always bunk with Margie. All right, now what? Now for a little chat with my goony little cousin. I'll see if it's okay to go in. Margie! Margie, when I... Uncle Fern, she's lying on the bed crying. What happened? I'm afraid it's my fault, sir. I think she kind of got the idea I don't want to take her to the christening. Poor little thing. I'll have a woman-to-woman -woman talk with her. I'm really very sorry, sir. Oh, don't worry about it. Margie has her own ways of getting over things like this. <laughs> Come on now, honey, what's the matter? Oh, Cousin Carolyn, I just can't hold it any longer. Now, now, honey, what happened? Have you met Joe Sparks yet? Yes, Margie, just now. Why? I'm supposed to christen a ship for him, but I know he doesn't want me to. You know how ugly I am. Now, that's not true, honey. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. No, honey, no. I am, I am. I'm hungry. And I don't want to go with him. I want you to go with him. I couldn't do that, Margie. You got to. You know the truth about me, Carolyn. I'm so ugly, I've never had a date in my whole life. <laughs> Margie, honey, I couldn't take away your first chance at a date. If you don't, I'll do something drastic. Margie, stop! Margie, get away from that window. Margie, Margie, put that one stop as well. Margie, Carolyn, open the door. No time for that, Uncle Vern. All right, Margie, I give up. I'll go with Joe Sparks. He's out there now. Ask him so I can hear. It's all right, Marja. I'll take you, cousin. Just don't do anything drastic. Well, honey, you heard him. Now, suppose you go to bed and relax. What do you say, hmm? <laughs> okay, Carolyn. And thanks. <laughs> 
there now, honey. I'll come in and talk to you later. I'm sorry I caused all this trouble, sir. Joe, I'll guarantee the incident will never cause my daughter another minute's concern. I'll bet she's over it already. But you sounded all broken up. Oh, Uncle Vern's right, Joe. Cousin Margie has a wonderful way of getting over things. See, she isn't even sobbing now. I still feel awful sorry for her. Now, tell me all about this christening, Joe. <laughs> You want the homeliest man in our file? Yes, ma'am. The uglier, the better. That poor little Marge never had a date before. Well, they told me she'd get over it, but I couldn't get her out of my mind all night. Besides that, I'd kind of like to pay her back for bringing me and her cousin together. But we only handle attractive men and pretty girls. Who would want an ugly? Ugly. Wait a second. Now, what was that fellow's name? Hansford. Uh... Hausner, Hausman, that's it. Well, you've had him in here almost six years. I even tried to discourage him from registering. Here we are, William Hausman. I never thought I'd see the day. A perfect match for her, ma'am. Yes, the two of them should make a perfectly horrible couple. Well, this ought to make Margie Albright the happiest girl in the world. <laughs> Hi, Margie. Hi. Evening, Mr. Albright. Hello, Joe. Is Miss Carlin in? Uh, no, she had to go out. She really couldn't be here. She really couldn't. Oh, uh, well, Margie, are you ready for the big surprise? I'm ready. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Pizza, what is it? I mean, who? Uh, what's the surprise? Well, uh, Margie, uh, this is Bill Houseman, and, uh, well, he's the sort of a friend of mine, and I thought that you'd want to meet him. How'd you do? Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, this is my father, Mr. Albright. How'd you do? <laughs> How do you do? Well, uh, aren't you going to invite us in? Oh, excuse me. What? Won't you go right in? I brought you some candy. Fifteen pounds. I've always wanted fifteen pounds of candy at one time. Every girl does. Um, won't you sit down? Dad, what do I do? I don't know. You figure it out. You never listen to me anyway. Do I understand correctly? Mr. Hoffman is here to date me. That's right, Margie. I think you two will get along fine. Uh, just call me Bill, Margie. Gee, I think you're swell. Oh, this is going to be real fun. <laughs> Sorry, Carolyn. Yeah, I wanted to tell her about the other surprise. The really big surprise. Uh, you mean there's a bigger one? This one's going to be pretty hard to top. <laughs> oh, not too hard. Margie, I know that you really want to go to that christening. So, this is what I worked out. Now, Bill here is not only going to be a date, but he's going to take you to the christening along with Carolyn and me. What do you think about that? You mean we're all going? All four of us? Well, I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, I hardly think that you and Carolyn will be able to go, honey. I mean, to the same time. What do you think? I think what you think. Well, well you see, Margie and Carolyn have never been able to go out together. I still don't understand. Please don't make me explain, Joe. And don't make Carolyn explain either. That poor kid's been through enough for one night. Oh, gee, all this talk going on around here, and I ain't doing no dating. I want a date. Well, I think we can take a hand. Well, as they always say in the movies, alone at last. <laughs> Playing hard to get, huh? Now, Mr. Albright, I still can't figure out why Carolyn and uh, Margie can't go out together. Well, Joe, I think it's about time I tell you something. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't think I'd have told you, but your announcement about taking the two of them to the christening was a bombshell, believe me. What are you talking about, Mr. Albright? Here, have a cigarette. 
At least we can get off to a friendly start. Well, why are you acting this way, huh? After all, you ain't no better looking than me. Can you go, can you? I never had a date before. Well, neither have I. But at least I'm trying. And all you do is keep moving away. Look, I don't want to hurt your feelings or anything, but I just don't feel that you're my type. What do you mean, not your type? Look at my face. You ain't gonna find anybody more your type any place. I didn't mean any harm, but you have every reason to resent being tricked. I'll do anything to make it up to you, Joe. You aren't sore, are you? I'm not sore in the least, Mr. Albright. It's just that I can't believe it. Lovely little Carolyn is homely little Margie. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad I got that off my chest. Uh, say, Mr. Albright, what do you imagine Margie would have done about our double dating to the christening? Oh, I don't know, but knowing her as I do, I'd bet a thousand to a nickel that she'd figure out something. Well, this would be kind of tough, even for Margie, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You finally got up enough nerve to come around. I just dropped by to hear the tone of your voice. And now that I've heard it, goodbye, Marcia. I ought to pop you right in the eye. As a matter of fact, I think I will pop you right in the eye. Well, happy joy. I'm going to forget this whole thing, Freddy. I don't like this tone as well as the first one. Just give me one in the eye and let me go. You see this getup I'm wearing? You are going to make it possible for me to get out of it. You mean... If you think you're going to get me to make up like that... Who started this thing? Wait in my father's bedroom. I won't do it. <laughs> well, something funny out there, Mr. Albright? Margie's boyfriend, Freddie Wilson. <laughs> Wait till I stop laughing and I'll tell you. It seems that you and Bill are double dating Margie and Carolyn after all. I told you she'd come up with an answer. Uncle Vern, I'm home. Did you hear what she said? Carolyn's home. I wish I'd gotten back before Joe left. I'd sure like to go dancing with him tonight. Joe! I thought you'd probably laugh. Oh, Joe's here all right. Not only here, but just in the mood for dancing. Well, what about Bill? Who's he going with? Bill? A friend I bought for Margie. Oh, well, if there's a fellow for Margie, let's go call her. Okay, and I'll call Bill. <laughs> Bill? Yeah? Come on, we're all going out. Margie, come on, we're going out. Margie, come on, honey. Oh, Margie, what'd you do to yourself? You don't look like the same girl. Come on, let's get going. You're a lot cuter now. Well, good night, Uncle Vern. Night, Carolyn. Night, Mr. Albright. Night. Oh, incidentally, sir. Yes? Do you think Freddie Wilson makes a very good Margie? Not bad. And what do you think, Carolyn? Freddie Wilson? Oh, I think he... 